Hello friends and welcome. Welcome to another exciting episode where I review a fountain pen made in the 1950s in Germany. This time I have a special special fountain pen with a special special nib. I present you the Caveco Dia 800 and three with a special OBB nib. And the number of the model is imprinted right at the end of the barrel. Thermically imprinted, we have 803 and beneath it the size of the nib, double broad oblique. And here, quite, quite nice Caveco, technically imprinted and painted with that beautiful, beautiful gold paint. So, Caveco Dia 803 with an OBB nib. A wonderful example of a Caveco model made in the 1950s. I have here on the desk another Caveco that was reviewed on my channel a long time ago, a few months ago. This time we have a Caveco Dia 802G which had an EF nib. The problem with this model is uh, the fact that this part was broken. And it had another problem with a nib. But I bought it with me to show you the difference between a Caveco 802 and a Caveco 803. So, if we put them side by side, we can see they are both the same length but the Caveco 802 has a single ring at the end of the cap and this has two rings and we have some differences between the clip we can see here a, on the 802 model a clip that uh, resembles the clip and the beak of a pelican but in fact, we have the K, so the cover color go right over here. On the others, on the 803, we have Caveco, and it ends in this pattern. You can see the difference between the pelican beak and this pattern. And of course, we have a slight, slight change at the end of the cap. So this is a little bit flatter, the 803, than uh, the torpedo shape or the cigar shape of the 802. And I believe this 802 is a later model from the late 1950s, and this is from the early 1950s. So the early models had this flat design and in time we can see this rounded design. Of course the 803 is uh, not symmetrical because it ends in this rounded shape. Again like the 802, but the 802 maintains the same uh, rounded ending. The 803, I guess this is a model from the early 1950s. Okay, if we look at the logo, the logo seems to be the same, but we have some differences between them. So on the 802, we have uh, this dome. At, at the end of the dome, we have the Caveco. 
And the other one, the flatter one, because it, it is quite a dome over here as well, the logo has that wheel, that mechanical wheel surrounding it, thermically applied, as you can see. Now another interesting, interesting distinction between them is, of course, in the size of the nib. And this is the nib of the 803. And I will open the Cavacodia 802. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I thought I had the nib. So it has an EF nib, but if you watch the review and i will leave at the end of the video the review of this cafe code the 802 the nib had a problem in the sense that one uh, tine was longer than the other so uh, it uh, lacked a small small part of one tine so it scratched and now it's on the repair I hope that they can do a good, good thing. But another difference, and this confirms to me that this 803 is a model from the early 1950s and this is from the late 1950s. So you can see this uh, window. You can see the green window in comparison with the blue window. And in fact, this tells me that this is made out of celluloid and this is made out of simple plastic. I'm sorry, I can't show you the nib, but instead I can show you the tip of this beautiful OBB nib, so double broad nib. Speaking about double broad nibs, guys, I have a little treat for you, a big, big surprise for you. So I will let the 802 dia aside. And I have with me some interesting, interesting models. I have a Caveco Sport, but we have a Caveco Sport also from the 1950s, the Model 12 with the same double broad oblique nib. And I will leave it here. And as a comparison, I have the same Caveco Sport model, the same, this version is a V12 and V stands for this semi hooded nib with a oblique medium sized nib. So, uh, I am planning to show you writing samples with all of them here. And uh, as a size comparison, I have here a Mont Blanc 146 Meisterstück from the early 1980s. And you can see that our Caveco D803, it is smaller and slimmer, although it has also a piston than the Mont Blanc 146. In fact, I will leave the dimensions of the Caveco D803 on the screen. And after that, we will do the writing samples so unfortunately i don't have the uh, extra fine nib to show you of the caveco 802 but it was a lost cause it scratched a bit as you will probably see if you watch its review but i will use the Caveco D803 and the two Caveco Sports. Before I will start the actual writing sample, let me show you the beautiful, beautiful Caveco nibs in one shot. And after that, maybe I can show you 
also the Mont Blanc names. It would be interesting to see them side by side. So let me see. I believe that this is, uh, yes, this is the oblique medium one. It should be interesting to show them to you all. So, I'm starting with the Covecodia, and after that are the Coveco Sport models. Let me, oops, I hope I can hold them all because I want to show you some beautiful, beautiful examples. So, let me start with those names because they are relevant. On the right, we have a Caveco Sport 12 with a double rod oblique nib. And interesting, on the left, we have a Caveco nib fitted on the DIA model. Although they are made by the same producer, we have some differences between them. I'm talking of the tipping, of course. They seem to be of the same shape. Definitely they have the same ebonite feed. On our DIA it is slightly misaligned from the name. Maybe I can address that problem. And as you see, they both have that interesting, interesting ink window. And it, as you see here on the DIA, no, I'm sorry. So, yes, I've uh, rotated them around. This is the DIA, guys, 803. And this is the Coveco Sport 12. So again, I will show you the names. It seems to me that this has a different, different tipping point from the Caveco Sport, but we will see how they write in a few moments. Let's add the variant of a semi-hooded nib launched at the beginning of the 1960s. And just for fun, let me show them, both of them, in comparison with a nib from a 146, a Mont Blanc 146, of course. The nib of the Mont Blanc 146 is a fine nib. You can see the differences between the tipping points of each nib. And uh, as a particularity, the Mont Blanc nib is an 18 karat nib and uh, the Caveco have 14 karat. This nib is specific to a model which was sold in France. Usually the 146 is equipped with a 14 karat gold nib. Okay guys, now the moment you've been all waiting for I have all those fountain pens and I will prepare them for the writing sample. First of all, let me see. So I think this is the cap of this one. Yes, this is the cap of this one and this is the cap of our dia fountain pen so before the writing sample let me change the angle of the camera for you to have a better look so i've just changed the angle of the camera and now i am ready for the writing sample of course i will start with the caveco dia followed by the other fountain pens and I have decided to include also a sample with the Mont Blanc. For the ink, I um, 
we'll use a Parker Quick Ink. The only difference between uh, those will be that this Mont Blanc 146 is already inked with the Mont Blanc Royal Blue Ink. So it will have a different blue you will see in a few moments. Okay, and another thing that I will uh, use I will just dip them. I believe one of the Caveco Sports has a little problem with the piston filler. So uh, I will just dip them in ink, including the Caveco D803, and we will see how they compare to each other. So let me open the bottle of ink. What is interesting about the Parker Quick Ink it is a quite quite nice color and it has that uh, lubrication uh, to it that I believe it uh, makes it quite quite uh, recommended for piston fillers because uh, they assure that lubrication of uh, the inside reservoir so it is a nice nice ink to use on piston fillers. Let me put it here. And now I'm trying to find a little bit of a tissue. And I just got this handkerchief. I will put it right here. Okay. So, yes, I promise that I will start with the fountain pen review today. So the first writing sample will, will be of this beautiful Caveco D803 with a double broad oblique nib, a beautiful, beautiful 14 karat nib. This is the nib, guys. And I will uh, dip it in ink, in this Parker ink. So one two three four five okay i will remove the x axis ink and i will try to clean only the grip section it's quite interesting the grip section has this light concave ending so it makes it all right to hold it like this when you write with it of course this being the star of, of our review i will do some tests with it so we have the caveco let me give a little zoom yes it should be better like this so the Caveco, Caveco Dia 803. This was made in Germany in the 1950s. It is equipped with a 14 carat 585 double broad oblique nib you can see it writes quite quite well as a test to do when you have an oblique nib so you simply do this test do like this and when you do the other lines you can see the difference 14 carat oblique uh, double broad nib okay let me do the flex text uh, to test and this will be interesting because we have a gold nib from germany i hope you can see guys so you can see that we have a quite quite nice i will call it a semi flexible gold name it is quite quite wonderful again it is a, a juicy nib let me 
show you again so you can see it's quite suited for signatures quite nice let me test if we can reverse right with it so reverse writing it doesn't scratch but as you can see no reverse writing okay guys now let me see so i did the signature test i did the reverse writing test and i did the flexi test i think i did them all now i'm ready to tell you about the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so guys let me zoom out for a little bit you can see we have a special special nib here and this is the fact that uh, i forgot to tell you what i paid i paid a large sum of money for it just because of this beautiful beautiful nib i'm sorry i just run out of ink so now i will dip it again one two three four five now i think i will have sufficient ink so i paid for it 500 lace which means that i paid 101 euros or 113.91 american dollars so i paid quite quite a decent sum of money for this fountain pen but believe me guys it is worth all the money just this nib as i recently dip it let me try again the reverse writing so hmm, i see now reverse writing well it is possible as you can see if uh, this is an oblique double broad nib maybe this i will call it a b for broad i'm not so sure <laughs> maybe uh, it has uh, some uh, weaknesses to it so i think it is possible to reverse write with it but for short shorts uh words or sentences but definitely this name wasn't designed for um reverse writing a problem with the oblique double broad names in time you can see on this one the knee the tines tend to uh overlap each other as you can see right here especially when you do this this kind of a test so when you do the test of flexiness i must show you so the times you can see they are put to pressure you can see sometimes they will reach their initial position but sometimes they need to be carefully carefully put back on their place because this is one of the main reason that flexi nibs tend to uh, broke uh, a lot more frequent than the other simple rigid nibs because some people put too much pressure on them and in time too much pressure is not good for the gold nib so this was the caveco dia guys let me put back the cap on it i will leave it here by the way i'm sorry before i will leave it i will say that this was done with the Caveco 
with the Caveco Dia 803 with an oblique uh, double broad nib. Okay, I will put it aside. Now, I'm quite curious to see how this Caveco Sport 12 made uh, in the same period, so in the early 1950s, with again uh, oblique double blood nib. I'm curious to see how it will perform. So again, I will put here the ink bottle. I will insert the fountain pen. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I will try to remove the excess ink from the nib. Now I will try to clean just this part of the grip section. Again, the concave ending, it ensures a little bit of grip and with this part you can easily hold it. So I have did a review of this model so if you search Caveco Sport 12 OB, OBB on my channel you will see those other tests that I've done with the Caveco DI 803. Now I will do only this sentence. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so you can see this was made with my caveco sport 12 also with the obb gold nib so i will leave it right here now let's try that semi-hooded nib that it is um, that equips this Caveco V12 with an oblique medium nib. V stands for hooded or semi-hooded nib. This is the nib, guys. Also, I will put it in ink. I will hold it one, two, three, four, five. This is sufficient. I will remove the excess ink and also I will try to remove it from the grip section. This time we don't have that concave ending, so I will rely on this part to hold it. I'm ready again. Again, you can see the review of this V12 on my uh, channel and you will see the other parts of it. The, now I'm just writing this. So the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so this was done with my caveco sport this time v12 with an oblique medium nib and just for the curiosity guys i will use this mont blanc this is fitted by the way with this and i won't dip it because it has ink in the reservoir it has an ink window right over here again a beautiful beautiful gold nib 18 karat gold nib okay let me zoom for you to see better not too much okay now the quick brown 
Fox jumps over the lazy dog. So this is with Mont Blanc 146. With uh, this time, I told you it is a fine nib, but uh, judging by the way it writes, I think now it's an M nib M for medium, so a medium nib. The difference between this nib and the other nibs, this is an 18 carat gold nib. And now you can see all of the tests. So quite quite nice but you can see the difference between the obliques and the simple medium one of the Mont Blanc. The obliques have uh, some special special thing to them and especially those from the 1950s that have the, that specific German German that specific German flex to them. So, interesting guys, you can see the same Parker ink with the different, different names. It has a different shading. Of course, the Mont Blanc Royal Blue, in comparison with the Parker Queen, is a darker, darker shade of blue. So guys, this was my review of the Caveco. 803 I'm uh, sorry if it took so long but I thought to myself that now at the end of 2021 I will bring some uh, changes to the channel I've noticed that you like writing samples and you love to see the fountain pens in action and uh, I know for a fact that you like to compare different different models so for the first period of trial let's say i will use names from the same producers uh, from uh, similar models and i will compare them like i compared the caveco dia with the caveco sport from the same period of time from from the beginning of the 1950s and in time guys if uh, you like the writing samples maybe i will include in the writing sample different producer like i did uh, with the mont blanc at the ending of course the mont blanc is a different generation of fountain pen made in 1983 so uh, it has a different type of nib it was a different type of market in comparison with the market of the 1950s. But it is a relevant, relevant comparison because it is like a modern uh, fountain pen in comparison with the vintage ones from the 1950s. Thank you for your time, guys. I hope you have a wonderful christmas and uh, merry christmas and a happy new year i will still publish fountain pen reviews till uh, the end of 2021 and uh, i want to wish you a wonderful day wherever you are why not the new year i hope 2022 will bring you health thank you again guys bye bye and God bless.